future boy. All right, so it's been a while since I did a review. I have quite a few actually piled up that I need to get to eventually. So this one is The Congress, and this is actually one of the movies that I was the most excited to see at the middle of the map film festival that I went to. And it's by a relatively unknown director, uh, Ari Fullman. He also uh, wrote the adaptation. It's based on a novel by Stanislaw Lem. He also wrote uh, Solaris, which has had a couple versions, a 70s version, and more recently uh, Soderbergh directed a version with George Clooney. But that's kind of besides the point. Ari Fullman, the director, he did an animated movie a couple years ago, 2008, called Waltz with Bashir. And it got uh, pretty good reviews. It wasn't really widely seen, but critics liked it. I remember seeing trailers for it and everything when I was at the University of Iowa. It looked really interesting. I still haven't seen it. That was all animated. And so I was kind of interested to see his work. And this movie had been getting a lot of a lot of talk and a lot of good press on the uh, independent circuit uh, kind of before, you know, a big distribution. And it stars Robin Wright, so you probably know her most recently from House of Cards. She plays Kevin Spacey's wife. And she's the main star. I guess I'll get into some of the other cast as I talk about the plot if I can talk about the plot. It's very, <clears throat> how would you say, it's very like, very meta. It's very, very interesting plot. So she, Robin Wright, she basically plays herself. And um, so she is Robin Wright, the actress, and she's at a point in her career where she can't get any work. And so it's just kind of like, this is your career, this is where you're at right now. And her agent is played by Harvey Keitel, and he's trying to talk to her and tell her, you know, you're at the point where you're not getting certain roles anymore. You kind of have to take what you can get. And it's, it's really interesting because I go into quite a bit about her career as she was getting older, or when she was younger, I guess. So if you don't know, Robin Wright, well, her first movie she did was The Princess Bride. Uh, she played Princess Buttercup, so that was huge. And then later she played, like, uh... Jenny from Forrest Gump, and then she kind of had every uh, state, state state of grace was another one, but she really didn't uh, act much in a lot of movies, and they talk about that, and it's really interesting because it's just uh, I kept wondering if that's actually what happened to her career. Uh, they kind of just say you know she's really picky, but anyways, that's kind of besides the point. But Harvey Keitel is her agent, and he's telling her. You're at a certain point in your career, you have to kind of take what you can get, and this is what you're being offered. And so, it's not set too far in the future, but maybe a couple of years or so, it seems like. And what they are doing is they will scan an actress or an actor and kind of get their whole range of performances that they can produce. And then a studio or a company, that's usually a studio will own that actress and they can put them into whatever movie they want uh, any genre you know romance sci-fi comedy whatever they want they can put it in so like they own the actress they own the whole right to their image and everything and their acting performance and then if you let them do that you can't act anywhere ever anymore it's you get paid for that and that's it and so that's what she's faced with that's the decision she has to make and she has two kids, and they're a big factor in her decision-making. I didn't actually even recognize uh, one of her sons. is played by Cody Smith McPhee. He was in uh, the American remake of Let the Right One In. It was called Let Me In. And he's on the, in the movie The Road. A couple other things. I didn't recognize him, though. But anyways... She eventually she decides to actually do this. Uh, she signed the contract, so it's a 20 year contract, and they will hand over, so she hands over her likeness and everything, her performance and all that, to the studio. She can't act anymore, and they'll do whatever they want with uh, her performances. So that's how the movie starts. 
and then it cuts to 20 years later, and so it's quite a bit into the future now, and we see Robin Wright, she's driving into the desert somewhere, and uh, we realize, of course, that she's actually going to re-sign her contract or renegotiate the contract, and so she's driving out to the desert, she gets a little stop, um, there's like a security guy, and he gives her some, like a vial to drink, and and this is where the movie just gets kind of bonkers. It turns into an animated movie, so whatever she drinks, it's, I don't know, it makes everybody perceive like that they're animated, that they're um, cartoons, pretty much. So that happens, and she's going to the studio. It's pretty much like a giant hotel now. And she's going in there, it's all animated, and it's it's crazy. It's super trippy. Um, like one of my movie connections is Fear and Loathing Las Vegas. So this animated scene is pretty much like the most trippy parts of Fear and Loathing Las Vegas, but just animated. The style was really interesting. It felt really like a 80s style animation, kind of like a R-rated animate animation. Kind of made me think of like heavy metal or maybe like Fritz the Cat. I haven't seen Fritz the Cat, but I know it's like a X-rated cartoon. Kind of made me think of those. And so she gets in there, and she has to go, and so she sold her image, and now people can take, since they're all animated, they can kind of control what they look like by taking certain drinks, or like a pill, or something like that. And um, that's kind of the next step of celebrity. Oh, and I kind of forgot to mention, while she has stopped acting what they did with her image she started like a new franchise of it's a sci-fi franchise and she's kind of like a, a Barbarella style sci-fi uh, heroine and she's lasted for like a long time and not a lot of the old actors and actresses have so she's one of the she's kind of a rare a rarity in that case and so she goes to the hotel and stuff the person that she actually is negotiating with is played by Danny Houston He's the studio guy that she has to deal with. And then it just kind of goes off the rails. It's pretty hard to describe because half the time I didn't really even know what I was watching. But it goes into the concept of the next thing they want her to do is sell her likeness so that um, anybody can, you know, become her in this animated form um, just by drinking like a little a vial of something. Or like I said, like taking a pill. And for however long they want, they can be that person and you kind of see that all over this animated world people are just whatever they want to be a lot of iconic people um, they would recognize from pop culture and that's like what people want to be like Marilyn Monroe's and Elvis Presley's and stuff like that but yeah it gets pretty pretty insane she meets a guy named Dylan uh, and he's voiced by John Hamm I recognize his voice pretty pretty early on and so she kind of gets stuck into this animated world, and I don't know, it was really interesting. I want to I want to watch the movie again really bad just because I was super into it, and it was really interesting, but at the same time I was kind of like, okay, what's going on, what's going on? You're kind of missing a lot of it. It eventually does go back into uh, live action, so she's, you know, normal, not animated, and that's kind of one of the, I think the big crux of the movie is what's happening is people are taking these drugs to be animated just to escape life and they have to make that decision so you can stay here and be drugged basically you're drugged and you're imagining this crazy animated world or you can get out of that and go to the real world but everybody's zoned out and just drugged up so everybody kinda looks like crap it was like the decision she has to make and again, her kids come back into play quite a bit. She really wants to be with her kids and everything like that. Um, so yeah, that might not be the best plot description, but it's really confusing because, I, like I said, I don't really understand the middle portion 100%. I want to watch it again, try to get a, um, a little more understanding of it. Paul Giamatti also makes an appearance. He's a... Uh, uh, science, a doctor, a scientist that's helping her son. He has like hearing problems. He comes into play later too as well. But it's definitely worth a watch. Um, 
I it's so trippy. It's pretty crazy. Animation's crazy. I'd say, um, yeah, I've never seen anything like it. Just the whole concept. I mean, live action uh, and animated movies that I can think of off the top of my head, of course, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, but it's a kid's movie. And there's Cool World with Brad Pitt and Kim Basinger, but I haven't even seen that. And I heard it's not that great. It was just something completely different. It's kind of a bit more psychological, and I think it has some higher concepts in there too that are a little hard to grasp on the first viewing. So yeah, and that's kind of my review. I'm giving it a 3.75. I liked it. I definitely want to see it again, so that's a positive indication of a movie in my opinion. So I already mentioned quite a few of the movie connections, like Heavy Metal, uh, the animation style anyway, um, and Free and Loving Las Vegas, once she gets to that second step of the animated world. And that's about a good, hmm, I'd say two-thirds of the movie is animated. It starts out live action, goes animated for quite a bit, and then ends live action. They're almost a 50-50 split, but maybe a little more on the animated side. And so yeah, I think that's going to be it. Definitely check it out. Now, I do want to see this guy's first movie, The Waltz with Bashir, so that's a full animated movie um, by Ari Fullman. So that'll be interesting. And I think that'll be it. Uh, I don't have a sign up or anything for this one. So, alright, see ya.